Welcome to Jeff Rose Game Room. Today I have an interesting mod to share with you guys. Uh, it's a DualShock 4 Elite mod kit that I'll be installing in one of my controllers. As you can see in the screenshot, the kit can be ordered from Amazon for 35 bucks. Uh, and these are all the included pieces. Also comes with some uh, screwdrivers, but uh, just use my own. These ones were kind of cheap. Okay, so let's just get right into it. I'm going to start by uh, disassembling the controller, of course. Uh, I had some toggle covers on my toggles to prevent them from wearing. I'm not going to need those anymore. But uh, we'll just start by removing the four screws from the back of the controller. Okay, so once you have the four screws out, um, you gotta carefully pry at the plastic. Uh, you don't want to damage any of the plastic, of course, or any of the internal clips. Um, so take it slow here. Don't rush anything, and just make sure you get it right. You uh, don't want to do a sloppy job if you do damage a lot of those clips. Um, the controller will kind of feel flexible once it's reassembled and we don't want that now that the controller is opened up we have to make sure to be careful, we don't want to tear the ribbon between the front and back half. Uh, that's the ribbon for the RGB light, uh, like the LED on the inside, and the charge port. So we want to disconnect that um, and then separate that off to the side. And then we want to grab the connector for the battery, just gradually wiggle it back and forth, uh, and remove it. Now we have more space to work with. The actual plastic uh, tray that uh, holds onto the battery needs to be moved. There are clips on each side of it uh, that hold it in place. And then once that's off, we'll be able to access the single screw here and allowing us to remove the circuit board and the overall internals of the controller itself. Before removing the internals we need to release the ribbon cable for the front touch pad. Interesting fact about the controller itself a lot of people think that the battery life is bad because of the LED light. Not the case. It's actually the touchpad um, constantly seeking input. And this puts lots of strain on the battery. Um, anyway, uh, we're going to remove the carbon contacts for the face buttons, the touchpad, and all the buttons. I don't really need to remove all the stuff from the back portion of the controller, but I wanted to make sure that everything was clean before reassembling the controller. Uh, I have used this controller at this point for a little over six months, so they do get dirty on the inside because uh, dust does make its way in. All the pieces that are no longer being used have now been removed and I will now move on to cleaning the controller. To clean the controller I just use 
uh, rubbing alcohol in a microfiber cloth and give uh, both pieces a good wipe down. Of course, be sure to make note of how you disassemble the controller so that you can properly reassemble it. Not quite done with the cleaning, still need to get into the harder to reach spots with uh, a Q-tip and some alcohol. The cleaning is done and the reassembly can start to begin. I start with the touchpad and the option and share buttons uh, and then we'll move on to the rest of them. The replacement buttons are equipped with magnets in order to hold on to the various options they provide uh, for you to switch out. Because these buttons don't have the X circle triangle square on them, they kind of mess with my brain a little bit, so uh, I had to take a little bit of time with this one um, but just make sure you line the pegs up to the slots and you'll be okay uh, they're just a little confusing because they don't have the regular symbols you would see on a, a normal PlayStation controller and they're all the same color so it, it's a little confusing at first This portion of the controller is finished, we'll move on to putting the toggles on. And this is pretty much as easy as it looks. Uh, you simply just slide them on. They are uh, slotted with uh, flat faces so that you can't, you can't really mess it up. Um, they are a little bit of a tighter fit uh, than the regular uh, plastic toggles, but uh, that, that could just be because they are metal. Uh, 
who knows? I don't know. Either way, they, they do fit just fine. They just got to push them on a little more firmly than your standard toggles. All right, so we're into the home stretch here. Um, just putting everything back together. Uh, when you're putting the controller internal chassis inside of the controller itself, you want to make sure that uh, the ribbon for the touchpad is feeding through the little slot provided. Um, trying to get it through that slot after you've put it together is almost impossible. So. Uh, bit of advice there. And we've got to put the screw back in to make sure that it holds nice and firmly. Okay, so we've got the touchpad ribbon back into its connector. Uh, just looking over the controller itself, making sure everything seems good. And uh, overall seems like a, a pretty decent kit to, to install into your DualShock controller if it's something of interest to you. All double checks are good. We'll put the battery tray and battery back in, and then we'll put the backing back on. Another important thing we don't want to forget is to reconnect the ribbon cable for the charge port and LED. And if we don't do so, obviously we won't be able to charge the controller and uh, that's not going to be any good to us if it goes dead and we can't recharge it. So definitely make sure to reconnect that. The four screws that go into the back, uh, you just give them a little wipe down. The heads of the screws have a tendency to oxidize because um, of the salt from our, our sweat.
Now that the controller is back together, we'll give some of these uh, different pieces a try. Um, a lot of the pieces I, I haven't really ended up using. Some of them are too tall for my liking. Um, and, and some of them, I don't know, just aren't realistic for me. Um, in particular, these really tall ones here. Uh, I don't I don't use them. I use the second height uh, of the face buttons and also I use the regular d-pad you see me put on there uh, most of the time and as for the toggles I use a combination of two different ones. I use the lowest one and then the medium height one on the uh, camera toggle. After using this controller quite a bit, after it's been modded, uh, I definitely enjoy it quite a bit. I like having all the different options, particularly with the toggles themselves. I like being able to change the one in particular um, for controlling a camera in most games. So, that being said, I can definitely recommend it uh, if you're uh, a gamer such as myself. You know, so... Hopefully the uh, video was useful. Coming up to the end of the video here, uh, if you watched this far, uh, I want to thank you very much. Uh, if you liked the video uh, and you haven't subscribed, please do so. Uh, I definitely will be doing more videos. I do it mostly for fun, but uh, I do want to get more subscribers just like any youtuber you know so uh, please do subscribe if you like the videos and there'll be more um, thank you guys for watching have a good day all that good stuff